For Criminal Media Policy, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is a researcher and analyst, Professor Raymond Satna, here to unpack his column titled ANC Defeat, Crisis of the Democratic Order and How to Rebuild. Welcome, Raymond. Thank you. The general trend of your article is to suggest that the electoral setbacks the ANC experience in the local government elections are irreversible. But you also point to the ANC having been in deep decline in earlier periods of its history. So will it not be possible to recover its dominance? Well, those earlier periods were before the ANC was the government. I was talking about the 1930s, for example. And I think it was purely a matter of relating to your membership and people you drew in as members. But now the ANC has to relate to society as a whole. And that's a very different type of project from the 1930s when you had to rebuild branches and things like this. Now you're dealing with society as a whole who don't trust the ANC. And you've got to reach people who are not your members at all, but you've got to try and win their votes or at least not earn their hostility so that they can create obstacles to doing your program. And I don't think it will be easy. It's not the same as the recoveries of the ANC of earlier periods. And you suggest that the poor, those on the margins who remain oppressed, cannot be counted on for a democratic recovery project. Surely that is in their interest. Yes, you know, I'm just saying that we mustn't romanticize people just because they're poor and think that because they are poor, they are rock solid in their convictions and that they will never sway. Um, because in the apartheid period, uh, when the ANC was banned and was not nearby, it was not obvious that the ANC could help them. Very many people uh, joined up with the Bantustan say. Now, Walter Sassoulou once said something very interesting. He said, we mustn't say to people that they mustn't get involved in the Bantustan politics. MK is not there to help them. So what are they supposed to do? If they can play a role there and better their situation, they should do so. So on the one hand, there were reasons at times why people could see better chances through collaboration. But even if that were not the case, uh, it's very hard to remain firm with your convictions when everyone around you is despairing or, or, or demoralized and things like that. So that I'm not saying they will uh, betray uh, the democratic project, but you can't assume because people are suffering, that they will only go along a progressive route. They may go along a reactionary route. I mean, the people who uh, supported in Qatar in the time of the attacks on the ANC and the UDF, they were ordinary people. And um, some of them got, got drawn into the ANC later. And I think we must understand that there's not something automatic about remaining committed to a position. You are skeptical about attacks on Pravin Godhan and apparently management of ESCOM. Is there no basis for the targeting of Pravin Godhan and ESCOM CEO Andre Dereta? Is it correct to reduce it to scapegoating? Well, you know, um, on Sunday, um, the Minister of Finance, Enoch Gorungwana, said, you know, what's this about maintenance, maintenance, maintenance? We're not seeing the results. Now, everyone knows that the troubles with ESCOM started a long time ago and they were not addressed. And one of the things that was not addressed was regular maintenance. Now, these are old power stations, whatever they are. They're old. And if you don't maintain them, they're just going to break down. And they're behind on maintenance because it's been neglected by previous governments Going back to uh, even before Zuma, people didn't do the maintenance that was required, and now we are bearing the fruits of that, so that I think it is not correct 
to suggest that they are wrong for load shedding because they've had to shed loads because if you don't load shed, the whole system can black out. It can take about two weeks for us to get lights again in South Africa. So I just feel people are choosing to understand this in a way that doesn't correspond to the facts of the history of ESCOM in South Africa. And since you wrote your column, both the DA and EFF reject coalitions with the ANC. So what does this mean for the future of the ANC? Well, um, that's what I said then has happened now. DA definitely doesn't want uh, to go into coalition with the ANC and the EF, if yesterday said they didn't want to. Uh, so what I think is going to happen is that the ANC may be able to cobble together an alliance in Johannesburg, for example, maybe Nelson Mandela Bay. I can't remember the details of the places, but in some places it will be in the, on the opposition benches, as it was in 2016. But what I feel is even if it is the leading force in some municipalities, it will be that with about 38% of the vote. So the ANC is a very wounded uh, organization. It has not got anything like the support it had uh, in 2011 and before 2011. It's actually a very weak organization, and I don't think it's pulling as one. Uh, you know, the EFF, if there had been an alliance with the EFF, it would, was what the so-called radical economic transformation people wanted, and there would have been even more corruption again. So I think the ANC has to look and if it wants to survive, it has to look at itself, rebuild itself afresh, and not try to win at all costs, but try to rebuild with integrity. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Prima Media's polity about ANC defeat, crisis of the democratic order, and how to rebuild.